The six strategies of execution. <laughs> there we go. Six strategies of execution. We talk about speed, accuracy, timing. power, timing, finesse, and, and savviness. Understanding how to execute right. with all of that in mind. Hey folks, we are back. Granison Shines here with Saduri International for another Mastermind session, a discussion on leadership roles. We are on a roll talking about leadership roles. So now, here we have, before we get into the meat of the conversation, to my right, I have... <laughs> Al Gleason, the curator of nonsense. Curator of nonsense, and over yes, here sir. I have... Uh, Yasmin Murray, and he forgot to tell you, of course, we're his favorites. Ah, smart. we're the only ones he's got. Not true. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but my favorites, there we go. All right. And what was your name? What did you, did you Oh, yourself? I forgot my yes, own name. Yes. Uh, pleasure to meet with me, Yasmin Murray. Oh, <laughs> uh, Yasmin Murray. All right, folks, mastermind discussion part number three leadership roles. Let's talk about the, well, just go right through what review the first so six that yeah. we've covered in the last two videos. So the first six, the very first one is that leaders are good learners. Learners, okay. They're good visionaries, good communicators, great team players, yep. awesome team builders, and amazing motivators. So watch the last two videos on this topic. Today, we are going to talk about what other three? They're great strategists. Strategists. Ooh. Awesome change agents. Change agents. Oh my goodness. These, these three are really critical and problem solvers. Problem solvers. Wow. Us leaders, we are supposed to be strategists. Let's talk about that one first. Strategy. I love that word. When I think of that, I think of all kinds of complex things and solving some problems and being very strategic in how we're going to execute. Al, when you hear strategists, we're supposed to be strategists, what comes to mind for you? Man, what's the, what do you do that separates you from the competition? That's what I think about when we talk about strategy. Mm -hmm. It's okay. the way you get, it's what you get done, it's the way that you get it done. Yep. And an effective strategy will separate you from your competition. Hopefully you'll be ahead of your competition. You'll demolish your competition because your strategy is amazing. Beat them down the powder. Yes, what comes to you? To uncomplicate complicated steps to get to a uh, to a goal. Ooh, okay. That's strategy. All right. Yes, you okay. got to strategize to get to a certain goal, and to uncomplicate the steps, yes. and have a strategy steps yes. in place. Overall, my what they're both saying, I totally agree. I'm going to go a little bit higher and think about planning, understanding how to effectively plan something to be executed in a way that it builds for the organization, it creates efficiency, it's, it's offers productivity, and it offer, also offers bottom line profitability. So there are times we have to get very strategic about how we're going to execute, which is our modality number three, um, excuse me, number eight, six. I should say, number eight, eight. modality eight. number yes. eight, about the six strategies of execution. <laughs> there we go, six strategies of execution. We talk about speed, accuracy, timing. power, timing, finesse, and, and savviness. savviness. Understanding how to execute right. with all of that in mind. How do we move forward on whatever it is that we're going to do, utilizing that modality in its fullest effect? So we're supposed to be strategies. I love that word, strategy. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, number two. The second one we're going to talk about is? Change agent. Now this one's a massive one. We are supposed it's to be huge. change agents. When we talk about change agents, Yasmin, Give us your mindset. A catalyst comes to mind, and we talked about that last time. In order to be a change agent, you have to be a catalyst, meaning that you bring about the change without changing yourself. I mean, you still have to change within the change, but if you're going to help your team change, you have to be the rock, you have to be that catalyst. And the change agent is one of the most important piece of the puzzle because without the change agent, the companies that go through growth changes or people changes mm -hmm. will never happen if that change agent is not in place. Sure, okay, all right. What comes to mind for you? Yeah, I, I think I'm piggybacking on that. And I would say just being somebody who's willing to initiate the change, mm -hmm. uh, being somebody who's willing to seek the change. A lot of times we'll get comfortable doing what we do, and if it's working, 
then we'll just keep doing it. We don't seek to get better or to improve. Mm -hmm. And so I think as a leader, we should always be seeking how we can be more efficient, how we can get better, how we can think differently. So that, uh, you know, the end goal being that we continue to grow and, and do the best sure. that we can in, in our yep. position. So as a change agent, you should be the one to take the lead on change, seeking out that change, figuring out what change would be best, mm -hmm. and then, then fostering that change. As a leader, that's the one thing that we are always dealing with is change. Change in people, change mm -hmm. in processes, changes in the system, all the three of those working together, change in technology that can affect your industry. Mm -hmm. So there are sometimes we have to pivot. COVID really changed a big opportunity for people, giving them the opportunity to pivot their business. So we have to be on the lookout. We have to stay ahead of that. But as part of, but as a change agent, yes, we're supposed to be the ones who accept that, buy, have the buy and everything else, but we also have a responsibility of filtering that down to our subordinates. Yes. So everyone from the top filtering <laughs> it down, though the change idea can come from the top, should, could, can come from the top, but it also can come from other levels within the organization. If it's something that's going to help the organization, us leaders, we're supposed to say, okay, here we go. We have to change the way we do this, or we have to alter this, or we have to evolve this. That's something you're going to be consistently dealing with. And if you have a problem with change, I would say do not step into the leadership role. Oh, I'm going to say that again. <laughs> if you have a problem with change, do not step into the leadership role. There may be times when you may have to still buy in on something that you might not be 100% sold on yet, but you still have to figure it out and make sure that your, your subordinates, because they're going to follow you, mm -hmm. you're that leader, you're the example, you have to make sure you show them complete buy-in. Because it has a benefit. If it came from the top, your, our duties as leaders is to make sure that it's permeated down throughout the rest of our organization or the rest of the team, especially your team that you're responsible for. So let me say this, uh, Granson, some people are already leaders. Mm -hmm. But they don't like change. This is true. Speak to them, please. So those leaders step move out of the way. Now, what you need to really <laughs> understand. Yes, yeah, so that move out of the way. No, if you <laughs> change will happen. Yeah, because change is gonna happen. You. Yes. Change is going to happen. And then what you're going to do, you're going to put up a wall of resistance. And that is going to be infectious amongst your team members. And you're going to have this one group of people who are not ready to evolve their way of thinking in this new opportunity. So if you are not privy to change, if you're one of those who's just, I don't want to change, and I know there are people like that in that role, then you have to really adjust your mindset or I say, hey, move out of the way because the visionary, the leader at the top, he or she has that vision. And if you're being, if you're stifling the vision from getting down, then you need to really reevaluate re your status as leader. Good. That was a good question. And I have another question for you. If you are the change agent, mm -hmm. how, give me the top three or give them the top three strategies or steps to go through that evolution without really being that drawing the line in the sand that I'm not going to do it. What's the easiest way? Give three. What's three the easiest way for the for, for to, to communicate accept. to yeah. accept change? Yeah. Like like for me to accept change? For you to make to that yes. Okay, so for instance, well that's that's two ways, two factors that we just spoke about. One, me being the change engine, understanding that I need I'm a learner, so I'm always open to learning new things, which leaves you open to change how you do some things. Someone that may be a bit lower than you in terms of the position can offer really good advice about how you can change something. And as a leader, you have to really still understand that you don't know everything and take that into consideration. Mm -hmm. And so that way I become the change agent for me personally. Now, if I have a team of people as well, then I am my number one thing that I'm going to do is lead by example, mm -hmm. communicate strongly as well. So I'm going to lead by example and I'm going to communicate. I'm going to lead by example by my nonverbal communication, those things that I do because they are looking at you whether you think they're looking at you or not. And then how I execute my verbal communication, having the buy-in of the leader, having the trust of the leader, building confidence in whatever that change is, selling those benefits of why that change is coming exactly. about, why? talking about who, what, why, where, when, how, completely communicate with your team so that they can too open up their mind and be more accepting to the change or the evolution of whatever that may be. Absolutely. Ex and that's extremely imperative. Absolutely. Thank you for pointing that out that they have to number one buy into it. What is the benefits? Mm -hmm. How does it, you know, how does it affect them? Yes. That's what they want to know. If they know those three things, they will go in with the flow and go in with the change.
Go ahead. What, what would you say to people who believe it's not broke? You know, what, what's Why the fix it? If it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Sure. If so I, I take that's a very good question, by the way. I take that this approach for this approach. That if it's not broke, don't fix it. It may not be broken to you. First of all, do realize that. But still, also, just see what the change can possibly incorporate for efficiency, productivity, and ultimately product, for profitability for the organization or your department. As a leader, you most likely have p and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. so, it's not, so it's not about, I can come into, and I remember coming into a mindset one time, we need to change the system. I was like, this system works good. However, it offered other benefits that I didn't see, that I wasn't privy to until they explained them, until they communicated with me, and then I was open, and then it actually ran faster and everything else. So there were some very good benefits that allow us to speed up the process and everything else, but I would say don't be so close-minded to it. Investigate it. We are we're mm -hmm. leaders, we're learners. We do our research. That's a really important piece, to gather the information, find the information from fall leadership product. Uh, process. Find the information first and then you may have to measure it. You may have to analyze the two pieces of information and data that you have right. and see if it's, if it's necessary for that change. And if it's not, then hey, then maybe we want to say something. Well, a, a business example that always comes to mind when mm -hmm. we talk about change is block ver Blockbuster. Mm -hmm. I was going to say that. They but yeah. had yes. the system down. Yes. They were flying high. But they did not want to change. Mm -hmm. And change ended up the change that they needed to take, or the, because they wouldn't change, yep. right? It wasn't broke, so they didn't fix it. Uh, it what ends, is what ended up leading to their demise. Sure. And actually, why you say that, because I was working with them at that time, I was there. Uh -huh. Not that they didn't accept the change, they, they waited too long. Their timing was wrong, and they, they, they just waited long for the change. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the change was coming, it, they should have gone a little earlier, and then it ended up closing the entire 1,200, 12,000, 12,000 locations wow. because the change yeah. didn't happen when wow. it should have and happened. I've read stories that it was when Netflix was just coming out, yeah. there, were, there were higher ups that were saying, hey, we need to make these, mm -hmm. this change, yeah. but they yeah. didn't want to do it. Yeah. 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 And so like yeah. you said, they ended up moving too late, yeah. but that's how they yeah. moved, it was, it was a wrap. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, I'll tell you, that's a big mistake that we can make if we are not yeah. open to, to change. change. It's the one thing that's consistently there's something you have to deal with. Consistent yes. is change. Absolutely. Always, always. What are you going to say? Companies no, I, was, I was just thinking about where would, where would Blockbuster be? be I know. Oh, yeah. Netflix, we probably wouldn't there even would know be, yeah, about there, It would be Blockbuster movies now. It would yeah. still be Blockbuster, but just yeah. think about the resources that they, thing. that they had at that point know, yeah. and how they could have dominated the industry. Everything could be, you know, mm -hmm. Blockbuster could have been like the Google of movies. Oh my and God. All the other platforms <laughs> are going exactly. through Blockbuster pop. Yeah. You know, sure. I mean, the possibilities are endless, right? You know, but, and that was one of my favorite companies to work for. That was yeah. one of my favorite jobs. Yeah. And everyone had fun. I mean, all day you're watching movies and you're promoting movies. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, what, what kind of, it's like the dreamers, the gamers. Gamers dream and, 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 and movie buffers. Right, if you could work yeah, there. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, change agents. Again, we yeah. always, we got to consider, uh, we, we can't emphasize that point enough Evolution. that it, it's imperative that you take every day as a change agent, just incorporate it into your mindset and your psyche as a leader. Yes. The third point we're going to talk about today is... Problem solving. Problem solver. We're supposed to be problem solvers. Ooh. -hoo. Not so creators. We, is that, <laughs> that's true. So what comes to mind when you think about that one? I don't know. I don't like math. <laughs> <laughs> Solve it problem. Yes. yes. No, I think uh, as a leader, when you see a problem, have a mindset to try to solve it, right? Attack that problem. Mm -hmm. Don't try to avoid it or ignore it. If you see a problem, go solve the problem. You know, you can build your leadership on solving problems versus sure. uh, running away from them, <laughs> right? Don't let the problem, get the problem, don't let it get you. Yes. What do you think about When you problems? say problem solving, one thing comes to mind. I can solve all the problems because you know technical this that you can hire people but the people problems when people bring people problems those are the ones that get escalated and they become bigger if you don't nip it in the bud so solving problems of people with people are <laughs> the bigger problems yes so stepping into that role as well it's another thing that we're always going to be doing as a leader or should be doing as a leader is solving problems not creating problems and not try to solve the problem that's not there, but understanding that when the problem does arise, and it will, 
and it will, mm -hmm. and making sure we take the necessary steps to, if, to solve the problem. Sometimes a problem may be conflict of people, you have to resolve that. Sometimes it may be a, a technical thing, you have to resolve that. And certain methodologies or process improvement opportunities that can, that can help solve those problems. Either way, you are going, or we are going to have problems. And the company is a reflection of the people that work within the company and the product and service that it offers to its clients. Meaning that there's always going to be something that we, that's going to break down that we may have to solve. Mm -hmm. And it's just a, a living organism, living, breathing organism that has to respond to particular issues. And there are times when we can be reactive in solving a problem. And then there's times we can be proactive in solving the problem. It's, un it's incumbent upon us to understand the difference when we need to really to, to utilize that, step into that. Something breaks down the factory line, oh, we gotta stop the line, okay, we gotta solve that problem. Something happens within the organization as far as a, a future, you can see a future state coming based on a current state issue. Okay, let's step ahead, let's get proactive and solve this problem for the future. Either way, either way, we are to keep our eyes on the ball at all times, managing people and managing products and services, innovating, creating, and being the problem solvers. Can I add something to a problem solver? Not only being a problem solver, but making quick decisions. Sometimes leaders will solve a problem, but they take time solving the problem and not making quick decisions. Yeah. Mm -hmm and uh, that just kind of affects that too and we're going to talk about that a little later yeah, yeah. so critical them. thinking too think it through yes yes <laughs> gotta have that and that's why so problem solving you have to be able to step into our modality of five levels of thinking to really expand the fifth level of thinking is expansive thinking mm -hmm. that's where some companies have called us in, hey, Granison, we have these issues, our, our, our workers are being more stifled, they're not thinking creative, they're not thinking outside the box, mm -hmm. but they're not solving those problems mm -hmm. that they need to solve because they've been told to focus, focus, focus. Well, if we think, if we expand our thinking and think outside the box, we do have an opportunity to future state some of those problems by, oh, we should talk about this right now. And it's, it's tantamount to looking at stocks and, and, try, and understanding the predictability of the stock going up or down or the marketplace going up or down. There are certain tools that can help with that. There are certain things you can utilize, but there's also the buzz of what you hear out in the marketplace that will also affect that. So long story short, problem solving is a huge, huge, huge part of being yeah. a leader. And I think, I think it's important to note that a lot of times people but that's probably a million different reasons why people don't problem solve but mm -hmm. uh, big things that come to mind for me is it takes you away from your regular day-to-day -day activity mm -hmm. so a lot of times people don't want to do that or they don't feel like they have time I think it's wasted sure. time, yeah. yeah so and then the other thing is sometimes when you have a problem it gets in the way of profitability <laughs> yeah. or hitting goals or mm -hmm. whatever and so it really is commonplace for people yeah. to ignore problems. Shove it under the rug, right? Uh, and one thing that comes to mind, you know, I'm thinking about some of the big corporations that sell products and services that they know don't do what they mm. advertise that it mm. does mm. or has side effects or uh -oh. consequences down the road that they're uh -oh. aware of, but they don't say anything. Yep. And uh, so we, we really live in a culture where, you know, pushing these problems off to the side. Yeah. I don't see it. Place, sure. Yeah, I don't yeah. see it. And so, uh, so it's, it's it's incumbent upon us, uh, incumbent upon us as leaders, to not to not do that. Like, let's solve the problem. Let's not keep kicking the can down the road. Mm -hmm. Now stop leaving these problems for our children to solve and those types of things. Yeah. Because if we don't solve the problem when it's small, what happens? Yeah, it, it becomes big. Different. Good example of the oil spill off the coast of uh, California right now. Mm -hmm. I was watching the news. It was when they noticed it. That was like four months ago, it could have been nipped in the bud. And now it is, has escalated, it's gonna cost billions to get it cleaned up. So don't, ignoring prob problems, don't make the problems go away. Become the leader who solves problems. Yes, take the initiative at times. We have to make sure we dive into it. And so sometimes we wanna sweep it under the rug, like I was talking about, but it's not the opportunity for progress, long-term progress, even short-term progress. Short-term progress extending out to long-term progress. All right, folks, there we have it. Being the, what are the three we're talking about? Strategist, Strategist being the change, change agent, agent, and being the problem, problem solver. solver are our three topics for today. Thank you very much, folks. I'm Granison Shines here with Yasmin Murray and Al Gleason, the curator of nonsense. Until next time, folks.
Talk to you later. Bye.